Hi guys, welcome to Mohit Agriculture Tutorials. My name is Mohit Gupta, as you all guys know. And uh, today's topic is DNA replication. Another video of a session that is on the topic Central Dogma of Life. In this video, we are going to talk about the whole process of the replication of the DNA, how DNA gets replicated and what are the whole criteria of the replication, right? Uh, now, understanding replication is a quite problematic question because uh, replication is the process that should be processed quite, we can say, with a technique, with a program. If not programmed correctly, it may cause to disaster. Failure of a cell to express itself or maybe the mutation that may cause to diseases like cancer and many more diseases, genetic diseases that have no cure in the world, no one can cure them. So this is the, this is the main problem during replication that it should be processed properly. The enzymes that are working over there, before introducing enzyme, let me tell you the contribution of the enzyme. The enzymes that are working over there are just like, we can say, a worker or a manager, right? Manager is the correct word. Manager, the mainly the enzymes working over there, all the burden is on their shoulders of the cell. If a single, single, if a single type of, we can say, defect is there in the gene, then it may cause to disaster. Now, this is uh, all going to very, very confusing topic because central dogma is not that easy. Central dogma is going to be a big, very, 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 we can say problematic or we can say very, very, we can say how much we can think of is that much difficult process of central dogma. Let's talk about central dogma. What is central dogma and how does it work? So today's topic is, today's topic is, DNA replication. Now, topic is very, very big difficult because this is going to take my half an hour with you. Because I'm going to tell you in short, if I tell you whole process vastly, then this process is going to take one to two to three hours of mine with you. It's a big task and I don't have uh, that Wi-Fi connection that I could, can upload that video on the two hour video. So let's talk very, very short form of this process, the whole replication. Now the replication process is quite confusing. The confusion is what is that? How does the enzymes work? There are many theses, there are many uh, writers who wrote about this process. But the best I consider is the Watson, uh, James D. Watson's writing in his book Molecular Biology of a Gene. He wrote each and everything quite easy language. So I like that. And if not, then there are many more writers also and they wrote their own language in a typical, uh, typically see, see what uh, they wrote in such a way that you can't, you can be confused at that time. Right. So let's see how DNA replicates. Now, this process is going to be quite uh, difficult. Now there are certain enzymes that uh, consider them first, then we'll come to DNA replication. How does the DNA work? And how does uh, it replicate? Now these enzymes are, very first is DNA polymerase. Now DNA polymerase, I will not write the name, just uh, take a handbook and start writing what I am saying. These are your notes. Now the very first enzyme is DNA polymerase, right? The very first enzyme in DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase is the enzyme that is working in the cell, polymerizing deoxyribonucleotides with the nucleotide base pairs. So this uh, deoxyribonucleotide is the whole set of uh, nucleotide plus phosphate bone plus sugar. So the, uh, no need to write again, right? So a set of enzymes are working over where DNA polymerase is somewhat having its property of leader 
how it is having a property of leader let me tell you it organizes the cell processes the cell processivity inside the cell nucleus polymerase is used in we can say adding nucleotide base pairs and at the same time of constructing it is having a property of deleting also it is also a proofreading we can say enzyme which is having its own property its own inertia to work as exonucleus and endonucleases so this much is quite uh, efficient for understanding polymerase now let's understand bit by molecular way what is polymerase now polymerase is somewhat enzyme that is uh, somewhat this type of enzyme uh, hand type of enzyme enzyme that is quite uh, looking like a hand and uh, we can see the hand type of enzyme this is right so this enzyme is uh, quite like a uh, uh, hand veda veda you can draw it uh, like this so if you want to draw a hand we can draw it like this so this is somewhat a thumb a thumb and you can see the hand is there a palm and a thumb going like this so this enzyme is quite looking like this only and uh, in x-ray crystallographic and nmr spectroscopic reports they have seen this enzyme quite like this only that is a, like a ribbon like folded ribbons or are there in the same structure in the same position now this enzyme contains a palm that is uh, the flat area of the whole hand grip that you see over here the flat area of this uh, uh, position is known as beta sheet now what is beta sheet beta sheet is somewhat beta sheet is somewhat uh, a flat area where dna gets contacted with and or where the uh, activity of the polymerase works right so beta sheet contains positively charged ions that is metals zinc and zinc and magnesium ions now what is need of these ions big question to understand polymerase we are understanding in molecular way so let's first concentrate what is the need of these two ions over here it can solely work uh, without these ions also no that is not absolute true if polymerase has to work then it has to stabilize the negative chi uh, charge backbone of the dna to stabilize that backbone because polymerase is not that simple polymerase is looks simple but its activity is quite difficult from other enzymes if it has to work it has to stabilize the phosphate backbone of a dna that is negatively charged and to stabilize that phosphate backbone the positive charge ions should be there so that they can contract with the negative charge and they can stabilize the whole backbone and process should go on right so this is somewhat we can say a uh, review of what is polymerase a short review what is polymerase polymerase uh, let me more consider this topic in detail polymerase is a uh, enzyme that is having its proofreading activity to as a endonucleus and exonucleus as i have told you earlier also now this polymerase work in what direction what it is its working pattern so if you want to see the working pattern we want to draw a two line over here say this is dna say this is dna this is dna and polymerase is not that easy that i can tell solely in the introduction when we will go inside process in deep manner then we will see what is uh, the real functioning of the polymerase now let's uh, we are only reviewing what is polymerase 
so if we can see this full diagram uh, this is the strand that is uh, we can say 3 prime to 5 prime strand and this is a strand that we can say uh, like 5 prime to 3 prime anti helical anti parallel we can say helix are anti parallel with each other now polymerase usually work in 3 prime to 5 prime direction but there is a lot of we can say contradiction we can say a lot of confusion with this topic this topic is a topic that should be seated and few persons should fight on this topic because this is a bit confusing topic now why i am considering 3 prime to 5 prime because my writer that i have read from the book which i consider the best it has written that 3 prime to 5 prime but uh, uh, some more books are there i'm not taking any name but they have said that this is a confusing topic and topic should resist from 5 prime to 3 prime they said this. means 5 prime to 3 prime according to them this is the leading strand and this is the lagging strand what is the leading strand that polymerase works over where quite easily that is leading strand it doesn't need any excessive energy over there. but lagging strand is the strand where the polymerase works quite we can say it does not have its processivity that much so it creates a short turn of segments over there we call them okazaki fragment okazaki fragment let me draw it by somewhat another color because it is going to be confusing oh so we call them okazaki fragment say this is the okazaki fragment right this is the processivity of polymerase to work on leading strand and work on now lagging strand okazaki fragment what about the leading strand leading strand is somewhat easy for the polymerase to work when we'll go in detail then we will learn the processivity that is very very interesting one but now for now it creates 3 prime to 5 prime whole solely strand joined with each other no need of small small bits of fragments this is what is the uh, daughter strand that polymer is created it does not need any assistance of any else factor over here it doesn't want anything just it want a source of four base pairs that is in the triphosphate form adenosine guanosine triphosphate and cytosine thymosine so in this form if triphosphate form of nucleotide base pairs is with it it is with it then it will work as a very very highly processed method. Again, question arises that is it so easy that you are showing here? No, it is not so, so easy. It is far more, we can say, uh, very, very, very much a uh, discussion that is going to create a confusion over here. But don't worry, you will not be confused because uh, I'm teaching in such a manner. So don't worry. Now, once this strand is created, now once this strand is created, there is not only a single polymer is working on it. To create this strand, we need many more factors to work over here. Right? Many more enzymes, many more factors to work over here. Let me show you somewhat factors that will work over here to understand it quite easily. So second enzyme that I am going to introduce is introduce is helicase. DNA helicases. Helicase. Now this is a kind of enzyme that is having capability of detaching. Right? Detaching means it needs to work as a we can say chain over there. A zipper, right? Like you see a zipper in a jacket, you just hold the zipper and you just do like this, and the whole jacket is in two parts. It is open, we can say, not in two parts, but it works in the manner that to create DNA in the two parts. It is like a zipper, somewhat. Uh, hexameric ring structure it is having, hexameric ring structure, and this structure is 
quite uh, to be understood because this structure is to be coordinated by many more proteins over here. This is not a thing that solely works. It needs certain proteins. Polymerase also needs certain proteins for processivity in the fast matter because polymerase is one of the enzymes that is having a highly efficient capability. Our speed is very fast. Over one nucleotide base pair at one second and thousand nucleotides it can age solely. So polymerase is very 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 processed unit. But here it is. It is also not less than polymerase. It is without it polymerase cannot form any kind of uh, we can say daughter stem. Uh, helicase is uh, a primary need of polymerase to work over here, right? So when we are talking about the helicases, helicase is uh, we can say ring structure is there and hexavalent. You can think of uh, small small balls over there. We uh, I am drawing like this only and uh, three, four, five. Okay, so somewhat like this, a hexameric uh, ring type of structure helicases is having. So what it, it work is uh, to separate the two dot strands, uh, DNA strands with each other. It is just like uh, this is the DNA. This is the one strand of DNA, say, and this is the another strand of DNA. Red marker is not working. So this is one strand, this is the another strand. Now how does this hexameric unit work is, it uh, attaches to one of that strand and start working like a zipper. It start working like a zipper, you can imagine of a, opening a jacket like a zipper. So that is zipper is the helicase. So it works like this and processes in the same direction uh, of the polymer is 3 prime to 5 prime direction. Now helicase should be processed quite there should be certain proteins working over here so we'll go to more detail within a minute very firstly uh, there are a few questions please uh, write those questions over here uh, questions are what is the working criteria of polymerase very first question second question is what is the working criteria of DNA helicases. Uh, now write a long answer in your notebook wherever you are noting these all things. This is a quite difficult manner, but uh, you have to write as much as you can. Right? So it is the working of helicases. Now let's go on to uh, some more proteins. We, I must introduce some more proteins over here. Okay, so protein that I want to introduce is for the processivity. For the processivity, there must be a clamp. This is an enzyme. Uh, we can say a catalyst of the reaction, polymerase chain reaction. If this enzyme do not contact with the polymerase and helicases, they would not work. They are working is solely dependent on this circular enzyme, which is uh, I am considering is it, it has a sliding clamp and everyone considers it, it like in same manner. Side sliding clamp. Now sliding clamp is somewhat very very processed unit, right? Sliding clamp is somewhat very very processed unit should work very very deficient manner efficient manner sorry to work with the enzymes solely work with the enzymes but it is not that it depends on itself only there are some more factors that are being utilized in this uh, kind of reaction factors are with this unit there are 
clamp loaders right clamp loader is somewhat like uh, having three we can say somewhat like this finger three finger like this and we can think of a tooth uh, decayed tooth having somewhat uh, decay in it so which is a, a kind of tooth that comes and attaches to this clamp and carries it to the position where the work should be done this is the processivity of clamp loader this is known as clamp loader the clamp loader will attach to the clamp and carry it to the position where they want to work now how does this all unit work together main question arises because this process is highly processed highly highly processed now there are many more proteins that are been working with this solely with these enzymes there are many many proteins i'm not remembering the exact name but they, they are not that important but there are small factors that are working over here in this process small small factors are working now uh, let consider them some factors say some factor i remember that i'll introduce with you right now let's go to how these all factors work together main question arises Now, let's uh, consider a unit that is tau unit. That is tau unit. Let us consider it as a unit that is a tau unit. And uh, let's have three thread like structures coming out from it. Right? Now, Polymerase is not solely single polymerase. There are thousands of polymerase working. We are considering only three polymerase or two polymerase over here. The very first polymerase we call the very first polymerase that we call is polymerase say three polymerase three. Second polymerase that we call is Polymerase two and the third polymerase we call it polymerase one. Now these three polymerase are working entirely together. They need to work together because it is a highly processed man process. Now this process may cause mutation in upcoming generation because the replication is during meiosis mitosis. Both kind of replication. So upcoming generation should also get affected if this process is not highly processed. Tau unit, tau unit, we denote it by symbol tau. So no need to write the symbol, we, not, we all know that symbol. Now, tau unit contains more threads. It is not that simple. It is highly processed. It is highly processed. So at the same time, these polymerase are also attached to the clamp right let me denote it by some other color now these polymerases are also attached by clamp right now this is clamp somewhat okay. so this is clamp and clamp is not solely that it is attached to it with it tau units are holding clamp loader so that they can load these in enzymes to the particular position where they want to load it. This is a highly, highly, highly processed process. They want to uh, contain certain loaders that should hold them or else the grip might get detached, right? Polymerase might fall anywhere in the cell and the work cannot happen and that may cause to the mutation. So that's why these enzymes are being working together all together right now let's consider dna over here dna say this is the dna this is the dna 
and uh, it is having one of the n five prime to three prime and one of the n three prime to five prime. Right. Three enzymes are not working together on the single strand. So all these enzymes do not work solely in the single strand. Now the, this is say a gigantic liver mass as a polymerase three that work on the leading strand. Why we call it as a leading strand? Because it do not have any break in the daughter DNA. But this strand is having breaks known as Okazaki fragment, small small fragments of DNA has been created, has been created in this strand that is 5 prime to 3 prime. And it is having a reason. Why? Because process of polymerase is from 3 prime to 5 prime direction, but we are seeing that due to this joint it cannot work from the reverse direction it has to work from the same direction so these two polymerase one and two it has to create certain small small fragments of dna known as okazaki fragments again this process should be highly processed we all know this here also there are many proofreading enzyme that are working over here exonucleus Indonucleus inside machinery of the nucleus that work in the nucleus check out whether there is any mutation if there is mutation they will straight away stop and what is the problem of mutation we all know now let's do not consider that what is the time when this mutation is checked by those enzymes that is the interface the stop between the two phases they don't want to uh, create certain DNA that is mutated. So they check in the interface the, whether the DNA is mutated or not. If it is mutated solely, it is banned. And if it's not mutated, then the process is uh, carried on and this DNA will create proteins that will cause functions in the cell. Okay, so this is the working of Polymerase, how it works with the sliding clamp and clamp loader, all those things, all those external factors. Now, let's go on to once this strain has been, has been say, created. Now, what is the then function, then what function happens? Now, let us see now. You can see how confusing this topic is and if you do not listen it quite in the manner then it will create problem. Once DNA is created means the daughter stand is created it will not solely join with each other. There are certain proteins working that will recognize it and they will uh, help to join join it. We call that protein DNA A. DNA A is the protein, and there are many more proteins that are working in the eukaryotic system. MC, M, MC, MMC1. Like this, a complex is there that is known as helicases. Now the process is somewhat mainly simple, mainly same, but certain enzymes are there which are not in the prokaryotic system. So once they are being, say, created, the daughter stands are created, then small functioning unit will join with it and stabilize these strands. We call this protein as a SSB complexes, SSB complexes. Once SSB complexes have contacted, contracted, and attached to this strand, the process of joining the two strands starts. At the end of, at the end of this whole process, the exonucleus tend to cleave, tend to cleave the three prime strands of three prime area of the DNA because there is a there is a reason reason is somewhat enzymatic reason let's talk about that reason also reason is that 
once this strain has contracted they will do what they will solely not like a strand uh, a simple strand three prime ends are the ends which are straight open ends and they here also there is a open end five prime end so they will create somewhat loops we call it a uh, circular loops once the plasmid circular loop is being created ccc loops has been created superfoil loops then there is a uh, another enzyme working over here is the topo isomerase okay so what is the working of topo isomerase it does the work of catenation and decatenation once it is catenated if it decatenated and straight away create a strand that is straight strand and if it if it is decatenated then might be the possibility that topo isomerase would recognize it and would create a catenated strand so in this way if you see this structure this is a catenated structure polymerase will sorry topo isomerase will usually bind with it like this round circle and straight away cleave the uh we can say extra area and create a simple dna that is a um, uh, dna of double helix uh, double helix that is given by watson and crick here oh. there are some more we can say uh working of uh, replication process right and once this whole processivity is complete capping process comes because again this dna may cause this whole this whole circular uh, uh, that we can see plasmid type of area it can again create this area because two ends are again open and once it created plasmid that it will be unable for the cell to create it as a, right as a single uh, as a straight strands right so plasmid why plasmid is created uh, this is informative process this process works on microorganism that creates plasmid in them we are having certain proteins histone proteins that are working as a nucleosome whole uh, so we are having a superfoil chromosome but those individuals those organisms who do not have a chromosome they tend to create certain plasmid and the dna is then that form but we have to create chromosome so we need a straight straight dna because we need to coil it in somewhat this type of structure that is nucleosome to create a straight strand there are there is a working of the isomerase but still the 5 prime to 3 prime end should be capped so at the 5 prime end at the head they create poly guanine head now this is a kind of capping we say it to be capped now once polyguanine head is created it is capped now three prime end in three prime end they create polyadenine tail so the processivity is like that polyguanine head and polyadenine tail five prime end three prime end and uh, i do not remember that i have told how okazaki fragments are filled so okazaki fragments are filled by the polymerase three itself it will jump when it will reach to the uh, three prime end so it will jump straight away sorry when it will reach to the five prime end it will jump to this rna work in three prime to five prime direction and fill the okazaki fragment right so this is whole processivity of replication of dna a huge gigantic mass you can see uh, still i am having certain points of eukaryotic replication process but that is not important that much we need to only understand what is the process and what are the enzyme working over here now this process is over we'll reach to another set of videos in which transcription translation rna spacing many more topics are there so stay away tuned with us stay away tuned with us and uh, please subscribe hit the bell icon